Hello again, YouTube. Uh, this is my one-year anniversary update. Um, and, you know, I just want to let you guys know, or just let you folks know, um, exactly what I've done and how I've fared over a, uh, after a year of my do-it-yourself home solar, um, in, uh, you know, uh, project. And, you know, I have to say that, you know, after a year, I've learned a lot. I've changed, you know, changed the system, you know, to make it more simplistic for, you know, for myself and others. Um, and uh, it's been really, really fun. Um, as you can see here, um, I've changed. I actually put up a, a cabinet, a wall cabinet. I actually built this thing. I am not a carpenter, not by any means. Uh, but I had some extra wood laying around the house. And after the YouTube neat police... <laughs> <laughs> made some comments about my wiring and so forth. Uh, you know, I had some comments say, hey, it, that, what a mess, and, you know, and how this look, it looks really, really complicated and so forth. Um, I decided, and after watching some, some really good videos, some other folks with, uh, you know, some uh, good wiring and so forth, I decided to, you know, follow suit. You know, why not? Um, I've simplified it, you know, a lot. I no longer have the fans up. After a year, you know, I've discovered, you know, come to the conclusion, rather, that, you know, this room doesn't get, you know, really that hot. So it's no no big deal. So I just took the fans down. You know, if, if I find that, you know, it gets too hot this year or something like that, I can always put them back up. But again, I just wanted to keep them, uh, keep this implementation or, you know, this project real simple. And as you can see, I still have two charge controllers and, I have a little uh, little switch here in the middle, and this is just a switch I can switch between this charge controller and that grid tie inverter. Um, also, I still have my disconnects and this uh, this this disconnect switch from the inverter. Uh, it did have three wires um, going to another uh, grid tie inverter, but I took it out of the picture. Um, you know, again, just to keep it simple. Uh, so this is just another disconnect. This will just turn off the inverter, cold turkey. Um, you know, and there's my uh, 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 trimetric battery monitor and so forth. So really, nothing's changed. And in, in you know, in inside of behind the cabinet here is my ground wire and my fuse, all my fuses and in my inline fuses and so forth. So nothing there has changed. Again, I just wanted to keep make it real neat. I mounted my uh, inverter. Uh, on the wall, so you know that's still good to go. I still have my little battery tender for you know my uh, uh, portable system here. And one other key thing is I put my batteries. I reconfigured my battery bank. I uh, had to because I noticed that you know with my other configuration, you know I they my batteries were charging unevenly, and therefore they would be discharging unevenly also. I mean, it did charge, okay, but that was not the most efficient way to wire up your batteries. And, you know, I am always willing to learn and say, hey, I am no expert by any means. So what I did was I did some research and I found the most efficient, what I think to be the most efficient way uh, to wire up a 24 uh, volt battery bank. Now, after you get past like, you know, eight batteries or, you know, six or six or eight batteries, it gets kind of tricky, um, you know, trying to wire these things up so that they can, so all the batteries can get equally charged and they will, you know, discharge equally. So um, I found out that it wasn't, and you know, I needed to fi I needed to uh, fix that really quick. So I did some research, and as you can see, it's still a series parallel configuration. Uh, um, so as you can see out here, you have all of the, these, are, this is a parallel, you know, wiring positive to positive and so forth all the way down. And on this side, okay, this set of batteries, it's, it's all negative to negative and so forth. And, you know, in the middle, you know, you have these sets of batteries here and they're tied together in series all the way down. Now, one key thing about this is it gives you the 24 volts, okay? And wiring it this way, you can actually achieve, you know, some somewhat of an equilibrium about, you know, the charging between the batteries. It won't be perfectly equal, okay? But it will be more, it will charge more equal, more equally and uh, more efficiently. Now, also, you know, you see the, uh, the connection here. This positive lead, okay, that goes up to the inverter and the charge controllers and the battery monitor and so forth is on the, on the positive terminal on the first battery. The negative cable is on the negative terminal of the last battery. 
Now, that way it will be even uh, throughout all of the batteries, okay? And I got this from a website, and uh, you can also go, there's a video that M Missouri Wind and Solar did also um, that kind of shows, you know, how to wire it up and so forth, you know, kind of. Uh, but there's a lot of websites out there that'll kind of let you know um, how to do it right. Um, I've also updated my schematic diagram and so forth to be a lot more simplistic. I left out the switch for the, the grid ties and so forth because as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of secondary for me. And, you know, it's just, just a, you know, something extra. But for a fully uh, backup system, you know, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, as far as this illustration, uh, and it's always good to have some type of schematic. So, you know, you can always go back and, and redo it if you have to and, you know, make changes and so forth. But anyway, I have used the system quite a bit, um, you know, over the past year. And I'm very happy uh, about what, you know, what it's done. I'm very happy how it's performed and so forth with the battery bank. I mean, it was great. There was a power outage and the entire subdivision, not just the neighborhood, but the subdivision was out. And we had the only lights in the entire subdivision. It's kind of eerie. It's cool, but it's kind of eerie, too, because you got the only lights in the, in the entire part of the city. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, every, it's raining and nobody's going out to turn on their little generator and so forth. Um, and you got the only lights and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool, uh, but it's, it's eerie too, because, you know, you stand out, but, uh, anyway, I'm not really worried about it, you know, no big deal. But also one of the things that I did throughout the year is I took out all of the incandescents in my house or, you know, except for this, the one in the stove and stuff like that. But I'd say about 90% of the incandescents, 95% actually, of the incandescents in my home are no longer there, okay? I switched them out with these LEDs, okay? This is one type of LED, and this is another type of LED that I purchased. And they are, you know, for you know, everywhere from, you know, chandeliers to, you know, kitchen lights, uh, hall lights, bedroom lights, closet lights, bathroom lights, you name it, porch lights you know, garage lights, all of these lights, all of them are now LEDs. Yes, they cost more than incandescents, um, but uh, if you do it throughout the year, you know, I bought them, you know, I'd buy one, you know, this month and wait a couple of months and I'd buy, a, you know, a few more and so forth. And pretty soon I had enough to, you know, outfit the rest of the house. And I tell you, in the power outage, uh, it pays off big time. Because, you know, with my, with the way, the way I've got my system set up, you know, I just, you know, back feed power to the entire house through my interlock uh, switch. And I can walk around normally because I don't have to worry. This is about six watts, okay? Uh, I mean, as far as it takes about six watts of power to run, but it's equivalent to like maybe a 40 or 50 watt bulb. And this right here takes about two and a half watts, okay, to run. And this is like a 40, equivalent to like a 40 watt bulb or something like that. And they work fine. It works great. So, um, and I've got, I've got a few uh, compact fluorescent lights also uh, in, in the house, you know, in, in little areas that I really don't care too much about, like closets and so forth. But the key point is these things take next to nothing. And with a battery bank like this, you know, and with an inverter like that, and I'm going to tell you, this, uh, you know, having LEDs uh, throughout the house during a power outage, I mean, you know, situation normal. You just walk in, walk out, you know, walk through the house, watch your television, um, you know, uh, you know, read a book or, you know, play a game or anything. I mean, without worrying about, you know, the, you know, your lighting system draining your batteries. Or having to run DC battery, you know, DC lights and so forth. I mean, and I have no problem with those things. I mean, folks that are that are doing that, it's just that um, you know, with these right here, it's you know, two watts, six watts. You know, what can you say? Um, also, uh, you know, with this right here, with my battery bank, I just want to point out that I use two gauge wires. Okay, I went from four gauge. Now I have two gauge wires. Um, was it a real necessity? Not really, but, um, the, you know, the bigger the wires, the less resistance. And, you know, I wanted to squeeze out, you know, as much efficiency as I can. Um, you know, if you really want to do the calculations and so forth, all you have to do is just, you know, like this, this is a 3000 watt, 24 volt pure sign inverter. 
And if you do the mo you do the, the math, 3,000 divided by 24, you get 125 amps. So this is 3,000 watt continuous. So that, and that's way more than what I expect to use it for. Um, so at 3,000 watts divided by 24 at 125 amps, that's the most amperage as far as continuous that, you know, that I expect to get out of this inverter as far as my daily use. And if you go there, got they have some battery wire sizing calculators on the web that you could use to calculate what your proper wire size should be. And, you know, doing the, cal do, uh, doing the calculations, a four gauge wire is more than adequate to handle 125 amps. OK, based on the calculations in, that I saw. Uh, but two gauge wire, um, again, at that level right there will decrease resistance and, you know, increase safety and so forth. So I saw no real problem with it, you know, incorporating it, you know, in, in my battery bank. Um, but, you know, I just want to, you know, just throw it out there that if somebody does have four gauge wire and they have like a 3000 watt inverter with, you know, running at 24 volts, a four gauge wire is still fine. Uh, I'm going to change these out to two gauge again um, because of the, you know, it, just for consistency's sake, if anything else. But anyway, I just wanted to update um, everyone on YouTube, you know, that's been following my videos. After a year, I have simplified things. Um, you know, I've learned quite a bit uh, about the system. Um, and if, for those folks that are still on the fence you know, as far as from a cost perspective, I mean, yeah, you know, solar power initially, if you want to get a decent system, it's not going to be totally cheap like some people allude to on YouTube uh, because, you know, you got charge controllers, you got inverters to buy, battery bank if you want a backup system, the wires, the cables, the switches, the fuses, and don't forget the solar panels and the installation costs. Um, you know, and so forth. And, and that, that will cost you. I'm not going to lie. That will cost you. However, um, with the tax credits that you do get, you do get 30%. Okay. So, you know, something is better than nothing. And, and 30%, you know, a tax break. It, hey, that's, I'll take that anytime during tax season. But anyway, I want you, want you folks to uh, just know what's going on, you know, in my system. Uh, nothing really has changed except that I've made things a lot neater. Um, one thing um, that, you know, I want to uh, say about the little portable system, I found another use for it also, in addition to emergency backups. I went to a, um, a home, a, a, a thrift shop, okay, a thrift store, and I purchased one of these. This is an electric weed trimmer okay most folks don't really like electric weed trimmers uh because you know they have to they have to run around with a huge with a long extension cord and so forth and you know plug finding plugs for the thing i suppose i don't know i saw it at a thrift shop and you know it was i got it for eleven dollars and let me put it to you this way i got an extension cord maybe 10 foot or something like that a 10 foot you know outside you know extension cord, one of those orange ones and I plug it in here and I just, you know, this thing has wheels and I, I, you know, drag it along. And now I just, I just love this thing. This thing's great. I don't have to, you know, try to crank it up and, you know, uh, the, I had a gas weed trimmer and it just, it, I hated it. I really did. But anyway, this is like one of those hidden treasures that you could find in a thrift shop. And if you've got a, like a battery bank or, or I'm sorry, a portable battery unit like this, um, I mean, this thing is great. You know, I'm charging this thing off of my solar system. So this, it, this weed whacker, or weed trimmer, you know, cost me nothing to run. So, um, you know, again, just a little hidden treasure there. If you, if you, if for those folks that are interested, but anyway, uh, YouTube, uh, thanks a lot. And again, after a year, Hey, I'm still loving it. Solar is fun. Uh, it's, it's a fun project. Um, you know, it's easy if you do the research, do the reading and so forth. I'm going to do a video with, you know, with helpful information where, you know, resource information that folks could download and, you know, think that kind of help them understand solar and the things, stuff that they can do with it. Um, I'll put that together soon, hopefully, and, um, you know, give back something to the folks at YouTube, um, you know, and help somebody else out too. But anyway, again, the project after a year, I'm happy with it. it it's been great. 
And uh, for you folks that are thinking about it, you know, I just can, I just want to encourage you and say, hey, go for it. Take care, YouTube.